to Brother Jay Cavanis Bay, yes, uh, who have been demonstrating the, the Brotherhood uh, retreat for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And I thank him and I honor him for stepping out on faith and making decisions that are not always popular. It's not more. It's because we as Muslims, we strive to please Allah That's and right. not man. Because man is truth and false and strangely mixed. And when we strive to please Allah, we are in a safe place. Islam on. It's a blessing and an honor to be here amongst my brothers. Uh, some of you whom I only got an opportunity to dialogue online with. And it's a blessing to be able to meet you in the flesh and press your flesh in the name of Almighty God Allah, uh, which is always uh, a great reason to come together. And as I always teach, is that disunity is an illusion. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to acknowledge the illusion. It's not more. Right. Uh -huh. Because unity is spiritual. Mm. And I say disunity is an illusion because we're taught in our holy literature that every living thing is bound by cords right. to every other living thing. Right. And by the sweet breath of Allah, all life is bound in one. Mm. So whether you acknowledge it or not, we are already unified. It's right. 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 We are simply attempting to bring the unity down to the rate of action. Atmosphere so that we may enjoy the blessings of unity on earth. Islam moves. I thank Allah for the Prophet Noble Drew Ali. One of the greatest, if not the greatest decision we have made in our lives was to join the Moorish Science Temple of America. Islam moves. Because the Moorish Science Temple of America, I consider more the greatest organization to ever exist. And today, I was asked to give a, a brief presentation on the history of the Moorish Science Temple of America, which is always a wonderful topic to demonstrate. And before I go into talking about the Moorish Science Temple of America and it's the history of the organization as we know it today, I want to talk about Moors, who the who Moors are, and what Moor science is. It's not Moors. It's not. <coughs> who are the Moors? The Prophet Noble Jolly teaches us in Sunday school that we are Moorish men. The Prophet, he asks the question, why are we Moorish Americans? And the answer is, because we are descendants of Moroccans and born in America. It's not Moors. It's not. Now, when people first hear that phrase, descendants of Moroccans, they said, well, how do all of us come from Morocco? We are not teaching that all so-called black people come from Morocco. It's not more. It's not. The prophet did not say descendants of Morocco. He said descendants of Moroccans. It's not more. It's not. And in the same question in, the prophet taught that the modern term for Moabite is Moroccan. So if we're descendants of Moroccans, the, the ancient name for Moroccan is Moabite, Islam Islam. And I want to make that plain. 
Because historically, according to the Babylonian records, Chaldeans are more Islam. Islam. And I make the point that according to Babylonian records, Chaldeans are Moors because if Chaldeans or ancient Mesopotamians are Moors, then Abraham was a Moor. Islam? Islam. Abraham was from Ur, which is in Chaldea. And I make that point because many people are under the misconception that the Moors began with the nephew of Abraham Lot's son, Moab. So if Abraham was a Moor or a Moabite, that means that Moab did not birth the Moabite nation. It's not Moab. Uh -huh. Because that story, we gotta be careful of these stories to perpetuate an idea that opposes Moorish ancestry. It's not Moab. Uh -huh. We were not the offspring of incest. I wanna make that clear. First of all, the story is given a reason for the existence of the Moabite people, but it must be made plain and clear that the Moabites existed before Moab and existed before Lot, who was the nephew of Abraham. Islam Moors. Islam. The Moors were the first people. This is what Prophet Noble Drali taught. Mm -hmm. We can go to the Prophet's teachings for that because the Prophet Noble Drali has taught us that the Moabites, the ancient Moabites, were the founders of what? The holy city of Mecca. What's the ancient name for Mecca? Garden. The Garden of Eden. Mecca is the modern name. So when it comes to ancient Moors, ancient Moabite history, you're going to trace yourself back to the Garden of Eden and even prior to the Garden of Eden. Islam Moors. Because the etymology of Moabite means seed of the father or from the father. And that takes us to chapter 1 in the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America where we're given a spiritual history of the Moors. It's not. It's not. And it talks about that human seed that came forth from the heart of Almighty God Allah. So the Moabites as seed of the Father is spirit man. Mm. Because Allah is the Father of the universe. It's not. It's not. So I want to be clear. We're talking about Moors. The word Moor, it implies original man. And also dealing with the ancient languages, such as Syriac, which is a dialect of <laughs> Aramaic. And according to Western Syriac, the word Moor, whether M-O-R or M-A-R, which is a variation, because according to the ancient languages, the vowels are interchangeable. It's not Moor. It's not. The word Moor in Western Syriac means Lord. So that gives you insight into knowledge of self and also your birthright. When it comes to the subject of birthright, our birthright is to be Lord of the plane of manifest as well as the plane of soul. So to proclaim, to truly proclaim who you are, to truly be the message that you bring is to demonstrate your birthright. It's not more. Right, so the Moors are the original people, the founders of the Holy City of Mecca. So if the Moors were the first people, the first science given to the world is Moorish science. It's not Moors. It's not. Now what exactly is Moorish science? This is leading into the Moorish science temple of America. Moorish science, we have a working definition of Moorish science. More science in its most restrictive sense and more science in its most broader sense. It's not more. Now when I say when I say more science in its most restrictive sense, I'm saying more science as it applies to the Asiatics of America who are more sick. It's not more. It's so more science in its most restrictive sense is this. It is a body of knowledge based upon identification which distinguishes and separates the descendants of slaves from the institution of slavery. It's not Moors. Now, to qualify that definition, Moorish science is a body of knowledge. What, what does the body of knowledge consist of? Help me out, brother. All right. Exactly. So, being more specific, 
The body of knowledge consists of. That's right. The Holy Quran and the more science temple of America. The divine constitution and bylaws. The questionnaire and additional laws. All of the editorials written by Prophet Noble Drew Ali consist of that body of knowledge. Islam more. Now, more science is the body of knowledge based upon identification. What are we talking about? You see, our people are in a unique position. Now, when it comes to unity, brothers and sisters, brothers, pardon me, <laughs> because we used to talk to mixed audiences. But we are in a unique position. Being that our people are stripped of their nationality and birthrights in the year of 1774. So our people are still walking around in mental slavery. We have experienced psycho spiritual trauma. So we were not sent a knowledgeable man or a scholar, we required divine intervention. Almighty God Allah had to manifest a prophet to remedy our situation. So our situation is a little bit unique and distinct from all other people. It's not most. Because all nations suffer slavery, but the difference is when they suffered slavery, they came out of slavery still knowing who they were. We did. We are still walking around with a Negro mentality. And let me be clear. Simply because you have a nationality card or you are a member of the Morris Science Temple of America does not mean that you have been cured from the Negro problem. That's right. Islam. Huh? Islam. I want to be clear. The Prophet Noble Charlie says the Negro problem is being solved only as it can. And that is only by the Morris Divine National Movement. Islam. 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 So that implies that it's going to be a process to be cured from the Negro mentality. But we got to be dedicated to the process. Islam moves. Islam. So it's a body of knowledge based upon identification. Why is it based upon identification? Because to identify yourself as Negro, black, and colored is a sin. Islam moves. Islam. That's not Prophet Noble Draw. He says it's a sin yes, to violate the free national constitutional laws of a free national government and cling to names and principles that delude to slavery, that's a sin. So the body of knowledge is based upon identification. Who are you? What are you? Our race is Asiatic. Mm -hmm. Our nationality is Moorish American. Mm -hmm. But in essence, who we truly are, we are spirits. In a part of Almighty God and love. This is all a part of know thyself. It's not more. It so the body of knowledge is based upon identification. And it distinguishes and separates the descendants of slaves from the institution of slavery. It's not more. It's That's more science in its most restrictive sense. Now, more science in its most broadest sense. And when I say in its most broadest sense, because just like the Quran lets us know about the gospel of the resurrection of the dead, it's not confined to Jew and Greek, but it is the heritage of every man of every time and clime. It's not more. So with more science, it's not restricted to Moorish Americans. That's not the prophet say Moorish Americans, ETC, etc., or and the others. So more science in its most broadest sense, you gotta understand what science is. What is science? Science is a system of knowledge. Gain through study, observation, and experimentation carried on to determine the nature or principle of that which is being studied. Mm. Now my question to you, what are we studying? In the more science of America. That's your first degree when you open up the holy literature. Know thyself and Allah. Elihu and Salom taught Mary and Elizabeth about studying selves. So, more science in its most broadest sense can be described with one word, and that is selfology. It's not a move. The study of self which leads to the conquest of self. It's not a move. So, this is more science. And Almighty God Allah sent a divine prophet, a divine messenger with a divine remedy. 
who established a divine organization. And I declare this is one of the, if not the greatest organization to ever exist because it always was. If you had any knowledge about those Egyptian or Kemetan mystery schools, you understand that these were schools of more science. Because even the book, Ancient and Modern Britons by David McRitchie talks about the Egyptians being formed. Mm. And even the book, Stolen Legacy, it talks about how the Moors were the custodians of Egyptian culture, which they carried into Spain. Who do we take into Spain? Islam is. Islam moves. Islam. Islam did not begin with the Prophet Muhammad. Excellent. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon all the Prophets of Allah. Islam. That is a grand misconception Islam. that Prophet Muhammad brought Islam. Islam always was. Islam means peace. Islam means submission to the one true God. Islam. Prophet Muhammad was the founder of the uniting of Islam. Same thing with Prophet Noble Draw Lee. He was the founder of the uniting of the Moorish Science Temple of America, which lets you know what? Mm. This always was. Mm. But he founded the Moorish Science Temple of America. Islam Moors. Islam. And I thank the Prophet for establishing this divine organization, the Moorish Science Temple of America. Right. Mm. And I declare we all adhered to the teachings of the founder, the illusion of disunity would disappear mm. overnight. Islam over. Islam. Islam. It would disappear if we all bathed ourselves mm. and thoroughly ingested the teachings of Prophet Nobu Ali. We're striving to make the lessons a part of head and heart. Mm. Make it a part of every part. And when you make the teachings, the divine philosophy of Prophet Noble Drali a part of every part, you realize that when you look into the face of your brother or sister, you will realize that you are looking at the image of Allah who speaks with them. Islam moves. And to serve Allah. And this is a, a grand mystery that many theologians struggle with in, in regards to how do you serve God? Do I, I, I bow my head down? Or do I pray? Uh, do I spend long nights or long days in, in, in silence? How do I serve God? Prophet Noble Drali is clear. <laughs> to serve Allah who speaks within the heart. Just serve your near kin. Those who are no kin. The stranger at your gate, even the foe seeks to do you harm. So service to Almighty God of God, service to man. It does not say if man belongs to your grand body, then you serve him. It doesn't read like that. Listen, let me be clear. I want to level with the Moors real quick. Can I level with the Moors real quick? Yes, sir. I want to level with you. I love my leader. Don Jones Bay is my leader. Grand Sheik Moderator, he's my leader. I love him. But I'm, I'm naive to believe that simply because he's my leader, he's going to be your leader. I'm naive, and you're naive to think that whoever your leader is, that other moles are going to just galvanize under them. And oh man, oh we gotta <laughs> join it. That's naive. And Almighty God Allah revealed something to me, and I want to share with you. Praise Allah. And I pray I'm not throwing a cold bucket of water on anyone's aspirations or hopes, because it's part of the job of a branch to give the people hope. Hope is at the beginning. And I pray that Almighty God Allah guides my tongue, but I don't want to cause any confusion. But the situation that we're in right now in regards to all these different groups. Everybody is more scientific of America. Right. Oh, we're going to come together under one leader. I don't see it, Mo. Mm. <laughs> and listen, I don't want to dash anyone's hopes. But I know what man is. I know man is true from false and strange. I have a little insight about what ego is. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And it takes a, a great deal of humility that must be learned perhaps <laughs> over many lifetimes for you to humble yourself in a manner to say, all right, we all gonna come under the grand sheet of the moderator. I don't see that. And our situation is not unique in regards to other prophets in other nations. Almighty God of Allah sends a prophet to every nation according to the book of Allah. Allah sent Jesus. But what happened after Jesus changed forms? He reportedly said, go not into the way of the Gentile, but rather the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He was sent to save the Israelites from the iron hand oppression of the Pelican nations of Europe who were governing a portion of Palestine at that time. But when you read the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 26, you'll see when the term Christian was first used when Paul and Barnabas entered Antioch. Christianity didn't start out as Christianity. It started out as a sect of Judaism. They were Judeo-Christians. But today you see Christians, Catholics, Baptists, whole lot of denominations. You can look at Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon a prophet. When Prophet Muhammad was on the scene, there was not different Muslims. There were no Muslims saying, what kind of Muslim are you? That's an absurd question to ask. What type of Muslim are you? And I'm sure you've got the question. I've got the question over and over and over. Oh, yeah. A Muslim. My nationality is Moorish American. Let me, let me be clear, there's no difference between Muslim and Muslim. No difference. But when Prophet Muhammad changed forms, oh, the Khalifa, who was going to lead the Muslims? Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr is going to lead the Muslims. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. But you have some Muslims, huh? Ali should have been first. Ali should have been first. Separation. I'm Sunni. I follow the Sunnah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I'm Shia. I'm Shia. Today, you have people asking, "What method do you follow?" I didn't know what that meant at first, and I had to do research. Method. You know, brother Aki. Uh, Maliki, Hanbali, Shafi, you know. Today, there are over 80 sects in Islam. Mm -hmm. it's, not to meant to, it's not meant to be any sectarianism in Islam. That's right. All different types of <laughs> approaches to Islam in, in the Book of Allah. Same thing with Buddha. Mm -hmm. Buddha is a prophet of Allah. Mm -hmm. Confucius is a prophet of Allah. Mm -hmm. You know how many schools of thought of Buddhism there is? How many interpretation of the doctrines of Buddha and Confucius exist today? So you think we're any different? Nope. You think our situation is unique from them? The only difference is a lot of us are still suffering from the Negro problem. That's right. So when their nationality group comes together and creates a Chinatown, and we all know what Chinatown is. They don't all belong to the same temple. No, no. Nope. There's an Italian market in Philly. It's one of these Italian market. Mm -hmm. They don't all belong to the same church. So I say that to say this. I don't see a situation. And I defer to Allah. Allah knows best. If Allah intervenes, anything is possible. Through Allah. But with us right now, suffering from the Negro problem, mm -hmm. I, I don't see wars leaving their group. Because whoever raised you, they raised you. Whoever introduced you to the prophet, they introduced you to a savior. Right. And right. you're grateful because you have been given life-saving teachings. Yeah. Bear with me. Your leader is like your father. Mm. That's your father. He's, he's raising you up. I don't see more leaving their father. 
But ultimately, the Prophet and Allah are supposed to be our father. Correct. You know, that's how I was taught. By my father, may Allah be pleased with him, Brother R. Hopkins. And my mother, my father, taught me in a very unique way. We were taught not to follow man, to follow the prophet. Mm -hmm. But we understand the situation we're in right now. We have a whole lot of different groups. I'm the real more South America. I'm this, I'm that. <laughs> we got the right lineage over here. <clears throat> we heard those stories. Mm -hmm. That's right. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. <laughs> Demonstrate fundamental principles. Uh, correct. Because the prophet says in Allah that we are not to make radical, agitated speeches. Right. Against any organized group. <laughs> any organized group. Well, these group of morals are Ill illegitimate. They not right. They be careful. Don't pick that man weed. Be careful. Listen. Last time I looked, everybody weeds got dirty. That's right. <laughs> Last time I checked. Work on self. Mm -hmm. Where do you find yourself? Work on self. Yes. Study yourselves. Oh. He who knows well his lower self yeah. knows the illusions of the world. And I open up talking about this unity is an illusion that I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh. Knows why the things that pass away. Mm. Why are you giving so much energy to things that pass away? Mm. Oh. Oh, immediately you. Mm. See Kirkman Bay. Giant give a zeal. They not here right now. <laughs> and we have been doing some heavy research in this literature about the flesh, the soul, and the spirit. Mm -hmm. On the soul plane, that's where the true sensations are. Mm. And Almighty God Allah, He reveals. And there are many of us who got a lot of issues on the flesh, but when we go to the soul plane, you realize your error, the error in your ways. Right. So I will not perpetuate ancient hatreds. Because you don't know. Those brothers may be real chummy and enjoy themselves on the soul plane, but we fight each other talking about who the right one. Islam. 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 Allah is God. Allah is God. So yeah, we got a situation right now, but we got things in common. Correct. And they are stronger than those things that attempt to tear us apart. Allah's God, Drew Ali is his prophet. One Allah, one prophet, one temple. That's right. And when you're dealing with the one temple, I'm talking about the essence of the temple. The Morris Sinai Temple of America was founded in 1913 AD. Let me just throw this out. I don't mean nobody disrespect. But you have more so, y'all, Brother Hopkins, man, y'all belong to the to the Kirkman Bay group. 1934. Yeah. But no, they say 1926 sometimes. <laughs> we don't belong to a Kirkman Bay group. We don't belong to Emilio group. Or John Dean Zip. We belong to more science of America. Y'all the ink. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> well, it is a corporation. But this is the Motor Science Temple of America. And there is no 1928, well, y'all the 1926 Civic. That's an illusion. And I'm going to show you with the history and the progression of the Motor Science Temple of America. Demonstrate. Motor Science Temple of America was founded in 1913 AD. Islam in North New Jersey, right? Right. By 1916, we evolved into a movement. Okay, 1916. The prophet let us know that we organized as the Morris Temple of Science in the year of 1925. Then he says that we were legally incorporated as a civic organization. November 29, 1926. The purpose was to uplift all the humanity and to teach those things necessary to make our members better safe. Right. And just as a side note, we started out as civic, but there is a grand misunderstanding about civics today. Civics does not mean you're anti-government. Mm -hmm. I can drive without a driver's license. That's confusion. Mm -hmm. 
And guess what? There were licenses during the time of the prophet. And his chauffeurs had driver's license. Couldn't drive him without it. Oh, y'all, teach religion. If you want to know civics, you got to come over here. That's confusion. We don't support that. In the more science of America. That's right. That is not the teachings of Prophet Nobu Drew Ali. Yes, sir. The civic organization is the civics is a branch of political science. That's right. Which focuses on the duties and responsibilities of citizenship. That's right. Citizenship refers to membership in a political community. Hmm. Citizenship is membership. So if you're talking about you don't pay taxes, <laughs> you'll fulfill your, your membership or citizenship in a political community. Mm -hmm. And there are duties and responsibilities. A duty is to pay taxes. How do you get your roads paved? <laughs> How do you get the, the trash taken from your house? You enjoy the benefits, mm, that's right. but you run away from responsibility. Mm. That's not the prophet's gospel. No, sir. 1926, we were civil. We didn't teach that, okay? And I'm not speaking radical. That's a European Christian identity. And if he <coughs> teaches that and enjoys that, Allah says in the Quran, to you your way and to me mine. Mm -hmm. To you your deen and to me mine. But this is not the prophet's doctrine. So by May 1928, there was a name change on record. We were known unofficially as the most holy temple of science. And this is why old Qurans, old Diva, that's the year, brother. Mm. That's, we got a good one there. <laughs> holy Quran and the most holy temple of science. The charters read, most holy temple of science of the world. That's why the prophet had to go around and strike those charts, strike those charts. And we, we have a charter today in Chicago, and you can see the actual strip that was put across the name Moore's Holy Temple of Science of the World, and it reads Moore's Science Temple of America. So by May 1928, it was a name change, but it was still civic. So the prophet let us know that since the work of the organization was largely religious, the organization has been changed. And an affidavit to this effect has been properly filed in Cook County's Recorder's Office of Illinois. A copy of which we have on the back of our questionnaire, right? That's form 1099. Yeah. And that's a powerful document. <laughs> prophet, he's a, he's a public prophet. He publicized the document. He says, see herds, revised statutes, chapter 32 and 36. That will reveal to you many of the blessings that comes along with membership in the more science of America. Now I want to make the point that between 1913 and 1928, we saw a, a progression or an unfoldment of a divine organization. A corporation is an artificial person. There are many people who are all in your corporation as if it's something bad to be a corporation. But a corporation is one of the most fundamental ways of demonstrating unity. Because a corporation as an artificial person is made up of many natural persons. It's not a move. Many natural persons are coming together as one artificial person, a corporation. A corporation is an artificial person. So you can look at it in a sense as the more size type of America being born, if you will. It's not a move. Because prior to the incorporation, we still exist. So, when Prophet Dr. Ali was at 181 Warren Street, he's in Dixon's Barbershop, he's teaching uh, unconscious Asiatics about their nationality and divine creed, guess what? That was more scientific of America. Because at that time in 1913, it wasn't like, I'm going to go to a building and I'm looking for a building that says, Moorish Science Temple of America. If you was looking for that, you weren't going to find it. Because at that time, we were holding meetings in the Canaanite Temple building, Islam moves. Oh. But e uh, even though it was still more Science Temple of America. So there is no separating uh, uh, 1928, 1926, 
It's all more scientific America. It's line more. 1913, it was more scientific America. In 1926, it was more scientific America. In 1927, 1928, it was the more scientific America. It's line most. It's line. Just having a different name on corporate documents. It's line. So today, we see what's going on in the movement. But we, we challenge you, we challenge you to look for the best in your brothers and give them the best that is in you. I have always been a proponent of unity, Brother Captain is back. <coughs> and this is why I give honor to my father and my mother because of how they raised me. That's right, man. And taught me about the prophet Noble Drew Ali. But I've always supported unity, no, no matter what, you know. And we're talking about unity with those who speak the same language. We're not, the anti-government stuff is something different. We're talking about more and more sets of men who, who are reading Prophet Noble Jolly's Quran, who are going over the questionnaire in Sunday, who have the same love, if not more love, for Prophet Noble Jolly than I do. Unity. Unity, but I've always been a proponent of unity and being willing at least to sit down at the table with my brothers and sisters because that was a time before us that Moorish Americans would not even sit down, wouldn't even give an Islam to other Moors who did not belong to their time. That's deep. So I say to you, even though it appears. We're demonstrating slow turtle degrees. We're making progress. If you are at least willing to sit down and dialogue with your brother, even if you disagree, we don't demonstrate the degree of disagreeable. Mm -hmm. Let me get to know you. Because at the end of the day, we're, we're the children of one father. But I have always been a proponent of unity because I understand a little bit about the benefits of coming together. There are many, the prophet says, where there is unity, there is strength. Mm -hmm. Together we stand, divided we fall. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine the people in Chinatown not supporting a business because you don't belong to my town? That's insane. And the same if I'm in Cavalier's Bay and selling more American mist for you not to support because he don't belong to my town. That's insanity. insanity. And one definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. You're going to get the same results. But with unity, there's strength. One of the, the greatest civilizations to exist was the civilization of, civilization of more Spain. Everybody know about the Moors in Spain. But I've studied not only the good aspects, but the downfall of Spain. What happened to such a high civilization in the sciences and, and mathematics and, and philosophy and botany? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. We exchanged Spanish vices for Moore's virtues. We began to get greedy and satisfy our lower self. And one way of satisfying that lower self is the ego. We split each other up. I'm the Sultan of Cordova. I'm the Sultan of Toledo. I'm the Sultan of Valencia. I'm the Sultan of Granada. And you know what we were doing? We were fighting, we were actually engaging in wars, armies against armies, destroying each other. And while we busy destroying each other, the Aragon and the Castile, Isabella and Ferdinand, they coming together. Mm -hmm. So by 17, uh, 1474, Isabella and Ferdinand came together. Four years later, 1478, we witnessed the Spanish Inquisition. Yep. And the Spanish Inquisition was aimed at the Moors. Mm -hmm. So, in closing, we're given a great opportunity. 
in a more scientific America, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> Best opportunity you could have made is joining a more scientific America. I concur. And a more scientific of America represents a rebirth of Islam. Islam. Because studying world history, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. Studying the prophets, Jesus was a monster. It's not a monster. I want to be clear, he is a monster. I know the Quran talks about him being a Jewish boy. But that is a reference to his ancestry. Mm -hmm. Because the original people of Judah are Moors. Jesus taught Islam. They compromised his teachings. Almighty God Allah sent Muhammad to fulfill the works of Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right, and we witness a a Islamic Islamic uh, scientific expansion mm -hmm. under Islam mm -hmm. from from about 750 to 1300. You see many advances in the sciences, mm. but this is just quickly looking at history. By 1300, it was it was a decline going on in Moorish Islamic civilization. It was going down. So the Islamic civilization in Spain was going down, but then it was a, a rise because the Ottoman Empire began in 1299 AD. Islam. Islam. The Ottoman Empire was an Islamic empire founded by Osman Bey, Osman the First. The Ottoman Empire went from 1299 to 1923. And I look at uh, one of the founders of the modern Turkish government, uh, Mustafa Kemal Pasha, known as Ataturk. And just, just looking at what was going on, comparing. And it's a lot that we can go into, but time does not permit. But Mustafa Kemal Pasha Ataturk was born in 1881. Prophet was born in 1886. You see Mustafa Kemal Pasha in 1914 gaining military renown. By 1913, the Prophet is establishing more scientific America. 1924, uh, Mustafa Ataturk uh, abolishes the Caliph. We're organized in 1925. In 1925, the Fez is outlawed in Turkey. Prophet is putting the fans on our head. In 1928, the constitution in Turkey was changed from uh, calling it an Islamic government to a secular government. So they get rid of Islam in Turkey. But in 1928, the Prophet is filing an affidavit, making a more scientific of America the first, first Islamic first. organization in America. Wow. Islam first. First. Wow. I want you to see what's going on. And this is all the plan of Almighty God. Allah. Allah. It's a divine plan of the ages, mm -hmm. which can't be changed. Nope. And these are the plans of redemption. It's why I'm old. Praise Allah. Uh, four minutes, praise Allah. Thank you, my brother. Uh, we have a wonderful, again, a wonderful opportunity, uh, dear brothers, um, to, to learn the lessons of Prophet Nubu Ali and to realize that we're all on a divine mission. Almighty God, Allah bless us to be in a more science type of America. So if Allah endowed you with wisdom, you have a job to do, to communicate. And this unity is nothing but a manifestation of the problems of life. It's a symptom of the problems the Prophet Nobudrali taught. Prophet Nobudrali says, the problems of life are largely what? Social and economic. Prophet says our greatest plight is economic slavery. <laughs> And it, to really understand economics or economy, you gotta understand the economy of, of life, of human life. Islam moves. Islam. If you want to demonstrate economics, you gotta understand the economy of human life. And what is the economy of human life? Religion. 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 Islam moves. Islam. Does not define our structure. Mm -hmm. Let us know this is the true economy yeah. of human life. Economy is a system of rules and regulations by which anything is governed. Mm. And Almighty God of Law himself instituted laws for the government of the world. Mm -hmm. And he has wonderfully bared them in all beings and each by his nature conforming to his will. So it's not strange. There are no happenings because law governs all oh, events. Man. Whose law? Allah's law, which is inescapable. 
Islam moves. Islam. So the prophet let us know the problems of life are largely social and economic, but in a more profound sense, they are moral and spiritual. Islam moves. Islam. Brothers and sisters, brothers, I, I, I thank you uh, for your attention. And again, I give honor to Brother J. Cavanis Bay for uh, putting on this.